Hey there, curious minds. Today we're diving into the awesome world of simple machines. Ever wonder how we make tough jobs easier? Simple machines are the secret. Let's explore these simple machine secrets and more in today's video. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, join with my dad, Travis Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we'll explain how using simple machines make it easier to complete tasks. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning target for today is, I will be able to identify and explain how the uses of simple machines and how forces are changed when simple machines are used to complete tasks to do work. Let's start with the basics. What are simple machines? They're tools that help us multiply or change the direction of force to make work easier. There are six types, the lever, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane, wedge, and screw. Each one has its own superpower. Let's begin with the lever first. Number one, lever. Check out this seesaw. Levers help us lift heavy things with less effort. They have a pivot point called a fulcrum. When you push down on one end, the other end goes up. So common examples of levers are hammer claws, crowbars, bottle openers, tweezers and tongs, scissors, and much more. All of these levers multiply your effort and make it easier to complete a task. Think about this. Which would you rather use to remove a nail out of wood, a hammer claw or your fingers? Now let's move on to a wheel and axle. Number two, wheel and axle. Imagine trying to move a heavy cart without wheels. The wheel and axle make rolling things much easier. When you turn a wheel, you move the axle, making it easier to transport heavy stuff. Some common examples of wheels and axles are car tires, a bicycle, an electric fan, a power drill, and a wheelbarrow. Let's use a bicycle for example. On a bike, the input force is applied in a circular motion around and around as you pedal. The wheel and axle changes the direction of your force so you move forward in a line. With every pedal, you apply a strong input force over a short distance on the axle to move the wheel a greater distance with less force. This basically means that you can pedal on a bike and cover more distance in a shorter amount of time than you would just walking. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, what is one way you can use a lever? How does a lever make it easier for you to do work? Number two, which would you rather use to put a screw in a piece of wood? Your finger, a screwdriver, or a power drill? Explain why you chose your answer. Pause the video and take three minutes to write your responses. You got this, brilliant scientist. Now let's move on to pulleys. Number three, pulley. Pull, lift, and voila. Pulleys help us lift heavy loads by changing the direction of the force. It's like magic. The more pulleys we use, the easier the job becomes. A pulley works by changing the direction of the applied force that is started at the object. The wheel rotates about its axle when the rope is pulled from one end and the object is raised above the ground. The other end is either fixed or attached to the object. The groove in the wheel helps to keep the rope in place and reduces friction or the force that stops motion. Combining two or more pulleys increases the number of loops and reduces the effort required to lift the object. Some examples of pulleys are a flagpole that uses pulleys to hoist or raise a flag in schools, an elevator which uses pulleys to lift people, and a whale which uses a single fixed pulley to lift a bucket of water. Let's check out inclined planes. Number four, inclined plane. Ever slid down a slide at the playground? That's like using an inclined plane. It's a flat surface tilted at an angle making it easier to move things up or down. An incline plane works by taking advantage of the slope or incline, making it easier to work against gravity. The force required to overcome gravity is much less than what's required to lift an object vertically when you gradually go up an incline plane. The distance traveled will be longer, but the force required will be much less over a time using an incline plane. For example, an incline plane is often used to help people get access to buildings that have stairs. It would be extremely difficult to push or pull someone up the stairs, but it would be much easier to roll them up the incline plane. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, what is one way you could use a pulley? How does the pulley make it easier for you to do work? Number two, which would you rather use to help someone in a wheelchair to get into a building, the stairs or a wheelchair ramp? Explain why you chose your answer. 
Pause the video and take three minutes to write your responses. You got this. Now let's move on to a wedge. Number five, wedge. A wedge is a simple machine that has a triangular shape. It is thick at one end and tapers off to a sharp edge at the other. A wedge has one or two inclined planes. A wedge also has many functions like cutting, splitting, slicing, scraping, and holding. Some examples of a wedge are forks, knives, scissors, a shovel, a zipper, or your teeth. Let's use scissors for example. The scissor edges are wedges and when they cut into the paper, they divide it. Another example of a wedge is your teeth, which are used to cut through food. Now let's check out a screw. Number six, screw. A screw is a simple machine consisting of a twisted inclined plane wrapped around the cylinder and ridges. It has a sharp tip and is mainly used for drilling into wood, plastic, stone, and metal. The ridges allow a screw to drill deep. The primary purpose of a screw is to drill into objects. Rotating the screw creates a torque or spinning force that pushes the screw further into an object. Quick tips for understanding. Number one, what is one way you could use a wedge? How does the wedge make it easier for you to do work? Number two, how are forces changed when you use simple machines to do work? Does the force you use increase or decrease? Number three, what would happen if you didn't have simple machines to do work? Explain why you chose your answer. Pause the video and take three minutes to write your responses. Let's get it. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with identifying and explaining the uses of simple machines and how forces are changed when simple machines are used to complete tasks by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan a QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency. Record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not a run until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace, and have a positive, productive day.